Hello. So in this video, we're going to be doing a limit, as it says. Um, in particular, we're going to go through in some agonizing level of detail, but to really show all of our algebra limit rules sort of in practice. Okay, so we want to take this limit, right, as, so this is saying limit as x goes to 3 of this 3 times x squared minus 2x plus e to the x. So I'm going to start sort of just writing this out again. Um, some people like to write this as like an f of x and do that. Uh, in this particular case, I don't feel the need, so I'm not going to bother. Um, so I have the limit as x goes to 3 of 3x squared minus 2x uh, plus e to the x. So remember that uh, our, our limit rules, right, algebra um, laws for limits, say that we can do things like we can split this across the uh, addition and subtraction signs. So in particular, I could take this whole thing and I can write it as the limit as x goes to 3 of 3x squared minus the limit as x goes to 3 of 2x plus the limit as x goes to 3 of e to the x. Now, strictly speaking, I can only do this if these things exist. <coughs> so it would be, <coughs> excuse me, it would be a good idea um, to sort of make sure that these things exist. There are times where that's actually really important, and we'll see that later on when we talk about indeterminate forms and things like that. Um, but generally speaking, if you're working with nice continuous functions, which if you remember from pre-calculus, these are all continuous pieces, uh, each individual limit is definitely going to exist uh, as long as it's continuous at these given points. So I'm, I'm not going to worry about that part uh, in this. I'm just showing sort of how the limit laws themselves are, are applied. So we've split this across the plus and minus. Uh, but again, with our algebra laws, we know that we can also split this up um, according to the, the multiplication and exponentiation, again, as long as the limit exists. So. For example, here, and again, I'm doing this in sort of an agonizing level of detail. So in your own work, you don't necessarily have to show all of these steps, um, but I want to make it clear sort of how this is working. Here, um, I could take this first one, for example, and I could separate the 3 and the x, but I could also think of this as, you know, this, this x squared as being x times x and separate that as well. So this is going to be the limit as x goes to 3 of 3 times the limit as x goes to 3 of x times the limit as x goes to 3 of x. And to be clear, that is separating out. Let me see if I can get this. That is separating this out into three pieces. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing for this next one, but you want to be a little careful about the negative, right? So remember the negative sign. I'm going to have minus the limit as x goes to 3 of 2 times the limit as x goes to 3 of x. So that is... This piece getting split into two pieces. And last but not least, I'm going to have plus. And now here I can break up the exponentiation bit, uh, again, as long as they exist, into the limit of the bottom and the limit of the top. So here I'm going to have, it's going to look a little weird. Um, so this is as x goes to 3 of e to the limit as x goes to 3 of x. Okay, And again, that is doing 
this part. <clears throat> so I tried to reasonably color code it for you here. Now, the limit is x goes to 3 of x. Uh, x is you know, a nice continuous line. So as x goes to 3, x goes to 3. <laughs> I mean, like, sort of redundant and obvious, but to be clear, that's what's happening. So in this first bit then, uh, remember, constants are constant. It's going to stay 3 here no matter what. So this piece is going to get 3. And then as x goes to 3, x goes to 3. Same here. Similarly, 2 is constant, so I'm going to have minus. 2 stays 2. As x goes to 3, I get 3. And this last one, which is admittedly the, the little bit of a weirder one, E is a constant. Granted, it's an annoying and irrational constant, but it's constant, so it stays. And again, as x goes to 3, x goes to 3, so I get e cubed there. <clears throat> and now that I've done all this, all I have left is to simplify, right? So here I'm going to have 27, right? 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. minus 2 times 3, which is 6. And then e cubed is e cubed. There's nothing you can do with that. So that's going to stay e cubed. So in particular, sort of when all is said and done, I'm going to get 27 minus 6 is, so I guess, again, to be clear, I could have equal signs all around here. 27 minus 6 is 21 plus e cubed. And there's my answer. It will be a very common place thing to have, you know, these irrational constants just left as they are. There's no expectation that you would like plug them into a calculator and get a decimal approximation or anything like that. Okay? All right. So that is that. So here uh, we're going to be applying the limit algebra rules to solve a limit. Uh, in this case, we're actually going to be looking at a nice uh, fraction here. So we're going to be applying that um, divisor algebra rule as the primary here. So I'm going to start by just rewriting the limit so I can work with it here. So I have my limit as x goes to negative 1 of x plus 1 plus over x minus 4. Now remember, we can use our limit algebra rule as long as the bottom, right? So we can split this fraction into the limit of the top, right? The limit of the top over the limit of the bottom, as long as the bottom's limit is not zero. So here, I want to do sort of a quick mental check to make sure that as x goes to negative 1, the bottom doesn't go to zero. but Obviously, as x goes to negative 1, I'm going to negative 5 here, so I'm actually OK. So I can rewrite this then as the limit as x goes to negative 1 of x plus 1 divided by the limit as x goes to negative 1 of x minus 4. And again, I want to I wanna really stress here <clears throat> that this only is possible because the bottom is not zero. Um, and, and this is sort of an important note because we're going to do entire sections in limits and derivatives and uh, even some stuff in integrals where you have a fraction, you have a limit of a fraction and the bottom is zero. And so we have to go through like a whole other thing in order to actually compute that. So this is, this is not just sort of me being like, ah, rules are rules, right? This is a thing that's going to come up a lot in this class. So it's important that you know you know, that you sort of internalize this idea that this only works when the bottom is not zero. All right, so once we've split it like this, though, we can go ahead and just plug in the values and see what happens, right? Because these are both continuous pieces. So in particular, 
what is actually happening is that I'm doing the limit of this first thing plus the limit of the second thing, but these are constants, so they're just going to stay what they are uh, for the 1 and the negative 4. So I'm going to get then the limit as x goes to negative 1 of x plus 1 goes to negative 1 plus 1 divided by, and here, same idea, x goes to negative 1, and I have a minus 4. And now I've gotten rid of the limits, I just have straight up computation, so that's all I'm going to do. So I get 0 over negative 5. So 0 divided by negative 5, that's just going to be 0. Now your internal warning light might be going off at this point saying like, oh, but we needed to make sure that it wasn't zero when we you know, split the limit over here. But remember, the only one we need to worry about is when the bottom is zero, right? Because this is when that thing would be undefined, right? Dividing by zero is bad. It's like the black hole of math. Everything sort of crunches down and goes to nothingness and it's very, very bad <laughs> to put it mildly. So. Uh, we're trying to avoid that situation, right, where we're like dividing by zero. So that's why we need to make sure that this bottom piece isn't zero. The top piece, that can be zero. That's fine. Um, and in fact, that's what happens here, which is why we get zero as our final answer. Okay. Hello. So in this one, we are doing another one of these limits with algebra computations. Um, sort of in general, as we progress in this class, we're going to be doing more and more, bigger and bigger, more complex expressions. Um, so it's, you know, when we see something like, like this, this may not be too bad, but it's certainly bigger than ones that we've seen in the past. Uh, and it's sort of important to remember like, okay, you know, no matter how big or how complicated it is, just tackle it piece by piece, right? So that's what we're gonna do here. So again, I'm gonna start by rewriting it so I can work with it here. So I have the limit as x goes to 0 of this whole, this whole brick here. So that's x squared plus natural log of x plus 1 minus 2 all over x cubed minus 1. Okay. Now there's a number of things I can do here, um, but generally speaking with limits, it's a good idea to just sort of progress like normal, you know, try to just go through it sort of the way you would expect to go through it, breaking it up piece by piece and evaluating it, and going that route until you sort of hit a roadblock and find out if there's some problem with doing that. We'll see sort of what I mean, I know that's a very vague statement, we'll see what I mean by that as we get into future um, videos where we're doing like indeterminate forms and um, things like that, you know, trying to simplify and, and fix when things go awry. <laughs> um, in this case though, I'm just going to be tackling this thing by <clears throat> breaking this up, sort of Kind of doing it, I guess a good rule of thumb is to do it in a reverse order of operations, thinking like, what is the last thing that you would do if you were to plug in an x and, and try to evaluate this as a number um, and sort of break the limit up there first. So if I were to plug in an x and like evaluate this thing, the very last thing I would do is I would have some number on the top, some number on the bottom, and then I would divide the two. So I want to do that last bit, that divide. Um, that's how I want to break the limit up first. So I'm going to split this into a limit on the top and bottom. Or more accurately, I should say, I want to split this into the top and bottom. But again, to do that, I need to make sure, right, that the bottom is not zero at this limit. So I have to do a quick mental check and be like, okay, it's the limit, it goes to zero. Does x cubed minus one go to zero? And the answer to that is obviously no, right? Because x cubed minus one is a polynomial, so it's nice and continuous. It's gonna go to um, the, same value as plugging in zero, meaning if I, if I plug in zero, I'll get zero cubed to zero minus one is negative one, which is not zero. So that means that I can indeed split this up. Okay, so that's, that's going to be my first, my first step. So I'm going to look at the limit as x goes to zero of the top, x squared plus natural log of x plus one minus two. 
clear, it's the limit of all of this, divide it by the limit as x goes to 0 of the bottom, x cubed minus 1. Okay. And again, <clears throat> we can split these things up over the addition and subtraction as long as it exists at that point. Um, so we would want to, for example, we could split the limit as x goes to 0 of this thing. We could split it up into the x cubed piece and the minus 1 piece as long as each piece exists as, you know, each limit of those things exists, meaning the limit as x cubed goes to 0 exists and the limit of negative 1 as uh, x goes to 0 exists. So that's clearly true here. Um, x squared is a nice defined everywhere continuous thing. Negative 2 is a nice defined everywhere uh, continuous thing. The only thing I might have to worry about, right, is natural log, because natural log is continuous, but it's not defined everywhere, right? I can't have negatives inside. Um, so I, I need to do, again, another quick mental check to be like, okay, as x goes to 0, is that okay? I get 0 plus 1, that's positive 1. Natural log is defined there. So I can indeed split this thing up. So that's going to be my next step. <clears throat> so I'm going to split this up. And I'm going to split it up into each piece. So I'm going to have the limit as x goes to 0 of x squared plus the limit as x goes to 0 of natural log of x plus 1 minus the limit as x goes to 0 of 2. Okay, so that's splitting up the top uh, across these plus and minuses. Divide it by the limit as x goes to 0 of x cubed minus the limit as x goes to 0 of negative 1. Uh, sorry, of, of 1, right? I, I pulled out the negative there, so I don't need another negative. There we go. I always, I always feel like 1s look goofy on their own, so I sort of do this little uh, script 1, I guess, maybe. OK, so I've split up the limit into each piece. <clears throat> so now I can go ahead and evaluate these things uh, accordingly. So, for example, as x goes to 0, uh, x squared, right, it's a nice continuous function, so I can plug in the 0, it's going to go to 0. So, I'm going to do this over here. So, as x goes to 0, x squared goes to 0. As x goes to 0, natural log of x plus 1 is going to go to natural log of 1, right, because I'm going to get 0 plus 1. And then uh, as x goes to 0, 2 doesn't change, so it's just 2, where, again, don't forget the, the negative. Down here, I'm going to get uh, plugging in 0. I get 0, right, because 0 cubed. And then minus limit as x goes to 0, 1 is still just 1. And here, right, natural log of 1 is just 0. That's asking e to what power is 1, but Anything to the zero with an asterisk, we'll see uh, that limits will screw that statement up. So anything <laughs> to the zero is one, meaning really any normal number, any finite, uh, any finite constant like e to the zero is one. So this is really zero, meaning that I get zero plus zero minus two. So this is going to be negative two over negative one, which is just two. Okay. So again, I'm, I've been given this sort of big fraction thing, right? So same as, as up here. Um, so I've been given this big fraction thing, and I want to do the limit. So the first thing I did was split the limit on the top and bottom, but to do that, I had to make sure the bottom wasn't zero there, which indeed it was not, right? So I did a quick mental check. I found that it was not going to be zero, so I was good to go there. Then I split up the top and the bottom, but again, to do that, I didn't need, need to know each individual piece was well-defined. So 
you know, x squared was fine, x cubed is fine, two, one, these are fine. The only sort of quick question I had was about the natural log. So I went ahead and did sort of a quick mental check, made sure that worked, which it did. And then I could evaluate each individual piece and then simplify. Okay. So that is that.